my beautiful friends and subscribers. I'm so thrilled to have you guys back with me for another pick a card. And thank you so much for being patient with me while I took a little bit of a break from the channel so I could concentrate on some things that were happening in my personal life. But I am happy to announce that I am back to my regular schedule so you can expect to see regular pick a cards and mini readings from me going forward. So today is a really special collaboration with my amazing friend Lexi from Lexi the Leo. If you are coming from her channel or this is the first time you're joining me, welcome. I am so thrilled to have you. My name is Odessa. I'm the Mystic Intuitive Healer and I deliver messages through the cards that help you to awaken, heal, align, and grow. So Lexi and I really wanted to deliver messages to you guys today that would uplift you. So I'm going to be delivering messages all about the first impression that you make when you're meeting people for the first time. And Lexi is going to be telling you how you impressed your spirit guides. So once you're done here, definitely go and check out her channel because she's incredible. Her readings are so spot on and she just has beautiful, uplifting energy. So I know that you're going to leave her reading feeling very, very good. So I have three piles for you guys to select from. Pile number one has this jar of seashells and the yellow candle. Pile number two has the sunflower candle and a piece of honey calcite. Pile number three has the off-white butterfly and the clear quartz point. And I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to see the cards and the items close up in just a moment. And once you have selected your pile, I will see you at your reading. Hi, pile number one, welcome back. So you pick the seashells and the yellow candle. And this is a special collaboration with the amazing Lexi the Leo. I'm gonna be filling you in on the first impression that you make when you're meeting people for the first time. And then Lexi is gonna be filling you in on how you impress your spirit guides. So once you're done here, definitely go and check out her reading. And I also wanted to mention I'm running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and then comment on this reading. And then as soon as I reach the milestone of 6,000 subscribers, I will announce the winner on my community tab. And we are super close, so definitely get in on that. So let's get into your reading. So the first card that you have is artist expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life symbolically. So they see you as someone who is very creative, very artistic. You might actually be an artist or you might just be very expressive. So maybe you express yourself in different ways. Maybe you're a dancer. Maybe you um, wear clothing that really represents your personality or you participate in some sort of hobby that really like represents you, but they definitely see you as very creative and artistic. And I also think that they see you as very colorful and animated. So maybe you are very bubbly and you have um, this really larger than life personality is what's coming forward. And you might be very in tune with your inner child as well. Or maybe you work with children or you have a job that's very creative. Um, maybe you're a graphic designer or you're a web developer or something like that. Okay, next card is Optimism and it's the first card in the Consciousness series. So they see you as super positive um, that you are kind of glass half full and you might have had to overcome really like dark periods or droughts is what's coming forward because she's walking in amongst these um, trees that are bearing fruit. And of course, nature is going through cycles. So you must have had periods of time where maybe you had uh, writer's block or you were struggling to make ends meet. And that helped you to feel more present and grounded and optimistic about the future. And maybe you've just learned to not sweat the small stuff. Like you know that 
there's going to always be another opportunity to create something and maybe you just live in the present like you're just very grateful for what you have and if you have more that's amazing but if you only have what you have right now that's enough for you and that is just like a very elevated way of seeing the world and it's a wonderful way of manifesting more because you have to be a vibrational match to the things that you want to bring in so if you want something that's high vibrational and blessings are high vibrational you need to embody that you need to like feel optimistic like it doesn't mean that you can never be sad or ever have a negative thought that's unrealistic but the majority of the time you need to sort of surrender and recognize that you can't control everything so just you know focus on the things you can control and trust that the universe is going to bring the blessings that you need towards you so that you can have a fulfilling life Next, you have the loving woman, and this is card number six in the People series. So people find you very loving, very compassionate, very empathetic. They feel very comfortable around you, like there is this little um, wolf cub just sleeping on her dress, and there's all of these beautiful fruit and um, lush flowers at her feet. So you provide others with a soft place to land, they feel like there are abundant opportunities, there's nourishment around them, there's beauty around them when they're with you. Once again, this feels like very present, um, grounded energy. You might be very nurturing and caregiving to others, like you have mothering energy, or you might be a mother. Like that might literally be one of your roles, and like that's one of the first things that people learn about you. Um, there's also the possibility that you have a lot of love admirers, like a lot of people that kind of fall in love with you. I get this real like kind of girl next door, like dream girl kind of energy. Like you are someone that people want to settle down with. Um, and you also come across as someone who is very free spirited and you're thinking about the future, you know what goals you want, but you aren't causing that to make you anxious in any way. Um, yeah, it's that real in tune with your inner child kind of energy. Beautiful, I love that. Okay, then you have the fox and the fox has a key around its neck. Okay, so Foxes have a couple of different interpretations. One, they can be connected to trickster energy. So it's possible that some people have not understood how to really read you. You know, some people when they first meet you might be unsure if you're being genuine or whether you're trying to, you know, um, like you're trying to kind of like manipulate in a way is what's coming forward but I don't think that they see it as like like what's coming forward is kind of being disingenuous or being a little bit fake it's kind of like they're unsure if you are truly this optimistic positive and encouraging or whether you're just that way as a first impression because you want people to like you now the energy I get is that you win them over right you have the key to their heart you're able to open them up and you might have had the ability to get out of really tight situations and that might also be why people are confused about like whether they can trust you or not initially because you might be very adaptable you might be constantly shifting and changing because like foxes are able to escape from tight situations. They're also able to effectively hunt, like getting into the hen house. So that's an, associ an association with the fox. But foxes are also connected to long-term love and being a really loyal partner. So yeah, like people initially, especially love partners, I feel like, they might think like, mm, is this person trying to deceive me in some way? Like, can I trust them? Are they really this nice? Are they really this, this interested in me? 
and it takes them a little bit of time to open up and to trust you. But definitely I'm getting the sense that you are trustworthy. Now this card could also be indicating that you have attracted people that were not trustworthy. That you have attracted people towards you that were maybe a little bit narcissistic and they saw you as being naive in some way because you're positive and optimistic and you're in tune with your inner child. Now, maybe in the past you were sort of naive. Maybe you've had your heart broken. Maybe you've had people that have taken advantage of you. But I think that you've learned from that. I don't think you're that way any longer. Okay, the devil is the next card. So... This is indicating that, one, a lot of people think that you are super sexy and there's something a little bit dangerous about you. There's something that's a little bit alluring. Some people might have even been sort of addicted to you, addicted to you or your energy. You might have had people that were sort of stalking you. In some cases, for maybe one or two of you, you might have literally had a stalker but for many of you, this is just a situation where it's like your exes are still sort of like keeping tabs on you on social media, that kind of thing. But you might have also had people that like were just really attracted to your physical beauty and they might have thought that you were one dimensional is kind of the energy I'm getting like. This is going back to this fox energy where you might have attracted narcissistic individuals towards you that liked the way that you looked and maybe they liked the way your energy felt to them and they liked the way you made them feel, but they wanted you to just stay that way. Like you, they didn't want you to have any depth and then they sort of painted you as the villain when maybe you called them on their BS or maybe you um, put up boundaries or you just didn't play the role that they wanted you to play and then you're the villain. Um, or it's, I mean, some people might be worried about that going back to like, I don't know, should I let this person close to me? Then the Hierophant, card number five. So fives are talking about conflict. The Hierophant is often talking about an established way of doing things. It's like, it can be a well-established organization, like a university that's been around for hundreds of years or businesses that have, you know, been around and established for a long period of time, clubs, organizations, that kind of thing. Um, religions. And you are very free spirited, artistic, interesting. You know, you might be very in tune with your sensuality and that might be very threatening to certain people that have very rigid ways of thinking about the world. And as a result of that, they see you as the villain. You know, like they don't like that you love the people that you love or you wear your hair a certain way or you wear those clothes or you say those things or you, you know, whatever it is. Like they are threatened by the fact that you're more liberated than them and they want everyone to be like them. And then they paint you as the villain. But honestly, it feels to me like they are the energy vampires. There is a vampire on this card. So they are trying to take something from you that you are unwilling to give. And then their impression of you is negative. Now, for others of you or other people when they meet you, they actually see you as someone who gives them a lot of knowledge and authority and maybe you are helping them to understand that they can liberate themselves and they don't have to give into this energy or there might be like that they can be more than one dimensional because I think about a vampire they go through that transformation, right? Like they present more than one side of themselves. And maybe you're like that too. Maybe you have a traditional job. You have like a Monday to Friday, nine to five job. And like it is for an organization. And then on this side, you're doing something really wild. And, and like, you know, you work at a bank during the day. And then on the weekends, you're a burlesque dancer. You know, like that kind of thing. And some people don't get it. And other people are like, yes. I love this. Now I feel liberated. Like if they can do it, I can do it too. Okay, so meditation. You're obviously somebody who is very calm. People feel very relaxed around you. 
and this has an octopus on it which also has that energy of the fox so you are able to transmutate yourself because an octopus can camouflage themselves they can also they're super intelligent they are so smart and they can get out of tight situations and this particular octopus is holding a lantern so it makes me think of the hermit like you might be able to help people figure out how to like walk between the worlds like how do you do both how do you do more than one thing maybe it's like you're a parent and you're running your own business you know like how do you balance out both there's something that you're doing there's like more than one aspect of yourself and you show people how to do it and Lilith of course you have Lilith energy okay so Lilith the independence card, card number 30, reduces down to the number three. So you work really well in teams and you help others to figure out how to work within the physical, the spiritual, the energetic, like you are helping them to find all kinds of balance. You're super liberated, super independent. Lilith was considered the first wife of Adam. She decided to leave the Garden of Eden because she didn't wanna be controlled by Adam. He was having a little hissy fit about his masculinity and he wanted to be dominant over her in the bedroom and she didn't want to have anything to do with that because they were equals. They were both made from the same materials. She wasn't a piece of Adam like Eve was, um, you know, a rib from Adam. She was completely equal to him. So you have that energy like there are definitely lots of people that think you're amazing talented powerful independent fiery super sensual very sexy and they want to be close to you like lilith was also connected to angelic energy so there's sort of like this phoenix rising from the ashes kind of thing that you have and for some people you might ignite something inside them that actually makes them afraid. Like they're afraid of their own ideas. They're afraid of maybe their own sensuality. And some people will see you as a villain. In some people's eyes, Lilith is a demon. And then in other people's eyes, she is a spiritual being. And she is a benevolent entity very much like an angel and it has nothing to do with um, evil. So yeah, there is two sides of you and it depends on who you're asking. So the next card that you've got is judgment. All right, so you are helping people to raise their consciousness. You have elevated your own. You are talking about things. You're living your life in a different way. Maybe you haven't actually taken all those steps yet, but at least you have a very open mind. Like you definitely see things in a different way than most people. You might have felt kind of isolated as a result because like Lilith had to like go out on her own, right? Wander in the wild. So you might have been isolated and that kind of caused you to build strength because you are okay being on your own. And you are able to see where there are opportunities for you. There is a bunny here, which is a symbol of abundance. And obviously you're helping other people to rise up from the ashes or to help resurrect themselves from some sort of death. Because in the traditional tarot, there are people that are coming out of the graves on that card. So you've helped people to find the blessing in the darkness. Like maybe you help them to change the way they look at things too. Like looking at all of the things that happened to them in the past as learning opportunities or the building blocks of who they've become now instead of horrible tragedies that happen to them because they're evil or damaged or wrong in some way. Like you change the way they see those experiences. It doesn't change what happened. Like it, it was still a painful experience, but it doesn't mean that they're bad or evil in some way. And the world. So you've completed a major cycle, like the judgment and the world, like you've, you've really gotten to a place of enlightenment in some way. You're moving ahead. 
at a steady pace. There's a tortoise on this card. You've decided that you are okay with the pace that the universe is taking you at. Not feeling like, oh, well, I have all of these goals and if I don't have it right now, then, you know, I failed in some way. Like you're enjoying the journey. And with that, you're going to open up so many more opportunities because the world can really be talking about blessings coming towards you. So let's see if there's any like final things that people observe when they first meet you. Any final thoughts that others have about you? Okay. First is dagger. Fear, worries, tense situation. <laughs> yes, like I was saying, like, some people are really threatened and intimidated by you. And you might have internalized that in the past. You might have felt like, oh, what did I do? What's wrong with me? You didn't do anything. It's them projecting onto you. And I mean, it's always possible, especially if you do have strong Lilith energy, that you might not have understood how powerful that is. So you might have like, had like Lilith can be very intuitive, very psychic as well. So you might have actually seen different aspects of a person's personality and you pointed those out and those were like their deepest fears or their greatest worries and they didn't want anyone to see that stuff. And to you, it was obvious. I've mentioned this before, but you pointed it out and they're like, what an awful person. How could they like just air my dirty laundry like that? You didn't know that's what you were doing. So I would say you just need to be mindful of that in the future. Like just be cautious because you have the power to really like hold somebody up or really destroy them. And if you destroy them in a way, it will also damage you, right? Like you will get more bees with honey. That's what's coming forward. Okay, that. Take care. Enemies are working against you. Okay, so you definitely have some narcissistic people that have possibly felt burned by you, like maybe you triggered them in some way, like people that are narcissistic can have a lot of wounds that will be triggered in them. So they might have actually been trying to like, you know, talk me on your back and, you know, ruin your reputation. But I think that if you are focusing on being kind and generous to all people, you don't need to go and, you know, prove to someone that you're a decent person. You know, over time, that will be revealed. Angel, what did I say before? Yes, Lily has that angelic energy. Spiritual guidance, protection from harm. So if you have had people that have tried to ruin your reputation or take you down or they've made you, painted you as the villain, that was part of your spiritual journey. That was part of you being Lilith, wandering in the wild. And now you are at a place where I think that you're, you like if you had a tower moment, you've overcome it. And now you're going to be going into a phase where you're reinventing yourself. You're resurrecting yourself. Like that's what's to come. Maybe for some of you that's already started to happen, but it feels to me like it's on its way. And keep listening to your intuition. It's guiding you in the right direction. And then final cards. So I want to see if there's any guidance that Spirit has for you on how you can sort of like use these gifts and talents to your benefit or if there's anything they want you to know. All right. Okay. So what's coming forward? You got the 10 of cups, the ace of wands. They want these upgrade. Okay. The seven of pentacles, the three of cups, the knave of swords, and then the queen of wands. So yes, you are on your way towards this 10 of cups fulfillment. If you are single, this could be a new relationship coming in. If you are pleasantly partnered, this could be an expansion of your existing relationship where you're even closer or you decide that you're going to have children or you meet new people that are becoming part of your chosen family, your soul family. 
that is on its way. You're right at the beginning of this taking place. There might be some things that you feel like excited about. There's some ideas that have come forward to you. Start taking action on those, especially if they are things that require you to collaborate with other people. With the Three of Cups, um, you're going to have something to celebrate and it can be talking about you working with friends. And the Seven of Pentacles is talking about slowly working towards your future objectives. Planting your seeds, being aware that it's gonna possibly take a little bit longer than you wanted. The Knave of Swords is sort of a warning that you may need to be mindful of the way you express yourself. Try and be as compassionate as you possibly can. You do have this Queen of Wands energy, very much like Lilith, fiery, determined, powerful, leadership energy, strong entrepreneur, very creative. Some people will be intimidated by that. And that doesn't mean that you should shrink yourself or be less than you are. It just means that you need to be aware of that because you are presenting yourself. Like there's something here about a public image. So that might literally be that you're trying to break into some field and you're going to be in the spotlight or you're going to be in the public eye in some way, but public image could be in your workplace. Like you just want people to really think very highly of you. And the only way to do that is to be mindful of how your energy affects other people. And then you're going to end up in this 10 of cups energy. So, wow, I'm so excited for you guys. Very impressive energy. So this has been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. Make sure you go and check out Lexi's reading so you can find out how you impress your spirit guides. Don't forget about the contest that I mentioned. I'd love for you guys to participate. Just comment below or leave an emoji if you like and um, subscribe to the channel. And I would love to know just what your thoughts were on this topic or if there's any other topics you guys are really eager to hear because I'm gonna be starting to do lots more readings for you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you all and I will see you in the next reading. Take care. Hi, pile number two, welcome back. So you picked the sunflower and the honey calcite. And in case you missed the intro, this is a special collaboration with the amazing Lexi from Lexi the Leo. So after you're done here, definitely go and check out her reading as well because she'll fill you in on how you're impressing your spirit guides. And I'm also running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, comment on this reading, and then when I reach the milestone of 6,000 subscribers, I will announce the winner on my community tab. So let's get into these cards and find out what first impression you make when you're meeting people for the first time. So the first card is gambler, willingness to follow intuition, even when others doubt you. So you're a risk taker, you allow your intuition to guide you, you may have gone on a lot of different adventures, maybe you have traveled a lot, maybe you have reinvented yourself, you've tried out different careers, you've tried out a lot of different hobbies, you live in the moment. I think that you are creative, you're in tune with your inner child, you're experimental, and you don't sweat the small stuff. I think that you are likely somebody who really knows how to have a good time, and you know that there's no reward unless you risk something, right? And and it feels to me like you, um, cut, like that's sort of a core lesson of being human, right? Like we have certain things that we're here to accomplish and experience so that we can grow on a soul level. And we have to be willing to sort of step out of our comfort zone to sort of change patterns. And it looks like you're pretty comfortable with that. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, travel. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Like I was saying, I think that you either are somebody who is well-traveled or you're somebody who would like to be well-traveled. Um, you may have had lots of different starts and stops in your life. Like you might have decided that you were going to um, move away for school or move away for a job 
or you are just really interested in what's going on around the world and you didn't you you don't strike me as the type of person that's comfortable like spending your whole life in one place and that might not mean that you actually are moving all over the place it might mean that you have established roots maybe it's even where you grew up but you really like to go on vacations and like travel is important to you or learning about new things like the travel could also be like you love to read and you are constantly um you know devouring different books and the travel is all in your own mind or you are creative in your own right and your travel is you know creatively you're writing songs you're dancing you're doing something that helps to like like allow you to escape what you're currently facing um yeah that's really cool this also could be talking about traveling in terms of time travel is kind of the energy that's coming forward like you might like to read about ancient civilizations or there's something about the past that really draws you in and some people may have had problems with this they might not have wanted you to leave home or they feel like you are taking unnecessary risks like maybe you decided to give up a stable job to do your own business or you decided to get a degree in some sort of creative field versus you know say becoming an accountant where like there's more stability it definitely with the five it definitely feels like there's something that you have done that made other people uncomfortable and they might have fought you on it but it looks like you're listening to your intuition and you're going in the right direction Okay. Oh, dinosaur. Okay. So the dinosaur card is also talking about the past. So yeah, there is something about the past. Maybe you are interested in the past. Maybe you um, like to collect something like you collect antiques or you like there's something about the past. Maybe it feels something positive. Like there's knowledge from the past that you're learning about or you're acquiring or you're sharing. This could also mean that people feel like when they meet you, they've known you forever, that you're really easy to talk to, you're super adaptable, so you probably have something to say to anyone. You, you're probably one of those people that's just very comfortable around all different types of people. I think that you could be potentially sort of intimidating to some people. Some people might see you as just like beautiful and majestic and so powerful and wise where others might see you as really scary and intimidating. Um, I think it depends on who you're approaching and that's not really something that you can control necessarily. Like they're going to see you in a different way based on what their own associations are. And this also could mean that some people see you as sort of otherworldly and super interesting, whereas some people might see you as sort of dated, like they see you as old fashioned in some way, or like there's something like that they don't relate to. That's okay. Okay, let's see what else. So you got the four of pentacles. So you're very good with money or you're very good with controlling your resources, you come across as somebody who's really stable, some people might see you as controlling. So, you know, it's probably people that you've either worked with or maybe siblings or love partners that felt like you were micromanaging or controlling them in some way. And maybe you were in the past. Like, everyone adapts and changes. Like, I get this, or maybe they wanted to control you because you have this real free spirited energy and they feel like maybe you need to be more in control. Maybe you need to really um, be practical. But I, I get the sense that you might be very free spirited, but if there's something that you really want, you will buckle down and make sure that you get it. You know, like you are going to Make sure that you're going to save the money so you can go on the trip or you can like, you know, fund whatever it is that you're trying to do. Okay, so the four of bones, I think this is the four of swords in this deck. 
So this is talking about you being sort of relaxed and patient and you take one day at a time. Um, yeah, you just have this very subtle laid back energy. People feel very comfortable around you. Um, you allow things to just sort of grow at their own pace. So yeah, like some people might feel like you're completely in control, maybe of your own emotions. Other people might feel like you don't have enough control. Like you, you need to stop and like get moving. Like it's, it's time. But the four, both of these cards are number four and that's talking about foundations and stability. So like you do have things under control. Then you got the rest card. So you're very chill. People feel relaxed and rested around you. You must have very nurturing energy. Like, I, I just feel like you are somebody who, like, wants to be happy now. You're not waiting for some distant future to be happy. And I, I get the sense that you're an old soul. So you must have learned this. Like, and a lot of older souls do have this energy where they don't feel like they need to go and prove everything to everyone. They don't need to be a CEO. They don't need to be, like, the most famous or wealthy they are experiencing joy on multiple levels on a daily basis. Like having a really amazing nap, being able to like sit in a hammock, go on vacations, eat the food they want and spend time around people that excite them. That is a very fulfilling life and they don't need all kinds of material things to be happy or job titles or things like that. That's not to say that you won't have that success or you don't come across as impressive because the dinosaur is very impressive. But I think that you kind of surprise people. Like maybe there are some people that feel like, oh, you have so much potential. Why are you wasting it? But you're not wasting anything. That you are being more present and grounded than maybe they are. And they, they will likely look back on this with a different opinion in the future. Okay, Bronwyn, forgiveness, card number seven. So you obviously are somebody who knows how to put the past in the past. And that's also maybe why the dinosaur came out. Like you aren't carrying all kinds of baggage with you. you. You know how to forgive people and maybe you know how to forgive yourself. For some of you, I feel like you've gone through periods of time where maybe you made a lot of mistakes. Maybe you hurt people. Maybe there were things that you're not proud of, but you found that balance and you've forgiven yourself. Maybe it's other people, but you come across as very compassionate. And if you have had conflict with people, people feel like they can trust you. They feel like if, you know, like if you came back into somebody's life and yes, you knew them before, but you're sort of like making a first impression again, they would believe that you were sincere. They would believe that your heart was in the right place. They would feel it in your energy. Okay, now, oh, the lovers, yes. So the lovers is indicating that there are people that definitely have strong romantic loving feelings towards you, would like to, you know, build something with you long term. They could, they want to like buy a home, have a family, do all of those conventional things. Um, you know, you are like, the kind of person that they could see themselves with long term. Um, this can also be talking about you inspiring them to love themselves or to love life in a different way, to see things from a higher perspective because the lovers here are depicted as two birds in a nest. So yeah, birds are a symbol of being able to see things from a spiritual perspective, to be able to look past like just the black and white and they are colored red which is the color of the root chakra and the rest the character whoop, the character on the rest card is also red and so you've been able to help people get grounded find the things that they love and they're, they're really impressed by that and you got the emperor yeah you're super impressive okay so for some of you, this might be a situation where you went about life in a very unconventional way, you pursued your own dreams, maybe you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're studying something that's unique and different, and you've made it work for yourself. And 
people didn't think that you were headed in the right direction. They thought maybe your ideas were outdated or you weren't being, you know, driven enough because you were going at a slower pace than maybe they would want to. But you were wise and you were chasing your own star and it brought about abundance to you. Like this is very, very, very powerful energy. Very impressive. Okay, cool. So let's get some more cards and find out a little bit more about um, how what first impression you make on people. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. So you got pineapple reconciliation that really goes along with this forgiveness card. So yeah, there, there's something about you being very compassionate and you impress people with your giving heart and, and maybe you're great at uh, problem solving. You might be really good at being a mediator. You just have very balanced energy and people feel like they're supported around you. Parrot. Someone will gossip about all of your secrets. Now, when I was reading this, I wanted to say success and not secrets. So there is, and like this parrot, it's a macaw. Um, these sort of colorful birds are a symbol of kind of like the emperor standing out and really being seen. So you're different, you're unique, you're larger than life, people are noticing it and you're helping them to look at things from a new perspective. This is a red macaw, and then I was talking about the red birds over here. People are gossiping about you. Now, in a, this feels positive. Like This feels like after people meet you, they want to talk about you. They talk either about how attractive you are, how inter interesting you are, or how intelligent you are, or how they think that you're going to really make it big. Maybe they're talking about your business or whatever you've done. Like you know, word of mouth is coming forward. That's going to be a big um, benefit to you. Staff, you will be taking care of in difficult times. Yes, like you definitely have gone through periods where I think like financially things were sort of lean. Maybe you didn't have what you needed to like compared to what other people were sort of achieving. But it has given you some sort of gift. Like it was an opportunity for you to be more resourceful. It's like, you know, people who grow up with nothing and then they have this amazing career in fashion or something because they have that creative mind, like, and they work really hard and they just like think outside of the box. There's something about your hardships or the obstacles or the boundaries that were placed in front of you being sort of the, your ticket to success. Target, a goal-oriented person. Yes. So like I was saying before, some people may have thought that you weren't goal-oriented. There are The majority of people feel like you're on track for success and that you're really driven. And then you got the forest, muddled, unclear thinking. So here's that duality. Like some people feel like they can't see the forest for the trees is what's coming forward. They can't see you as who you truly are. They are biased based on how they see the world and how they see themselves. So don't get stuck up on that. It doesn't matter. Not everyone is going to always have like an amazing opinion of us, but most people are seeing you as like a real star is what they want me to say. Okay, so I'd like to get some final cards. This is just guidance, advice for you. Basically letting me know if there's anything that you can do or anything that you need to pay attention to bring about more positivity. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of, oh, interesting. Okay, so... If some of you have been sort of feeling like, where's my success? Where are things, like, when are things going to get better for me? When am I going to have sort of like my breakthrough? Um, that's coming for you. You've got the eight of wands coming forward. So this is talking about something massively shifting or changing. It can be talking about getting into alignment. So like you being 
an energetic match to something that you want. Now, the other cards that are coming out here, we've got the Six of Cups. So there could be some sort of goal that you had in the past, something that you wanted to achieve. Maybe it's the success of your business or graduating from school or something. And you feel like, is this ever going to work out for me? And there have been other people around you, like I was saying before, that have caused you to have self-doubt. They have the Seven of Swords sort of tried to manipulate the way you see yourself or the way you see your situation. Maybe they wanted something from you, like they didn't want you to go away to school because then you wouldn't be there to do things for them. And they have, or maybe they didn't want you to be successful because they wanted somebody to be able to go partying with. Like they didn't want to be left behind in this sort of devil energy. And you are starting to see things very clearly. The moon can be talking about illusions and then the devil can also be talking about illusions. The devil is also talking about those self-imposed restrictions, like addictive tendencies. The moon can be talking about um, the things that we want that we don't allow ourselves to take action on. It, like thinking about our wild nature and then leaning more into the aspect of ourselves that is more domesticated. But it can also be talking about blessings that are coming forward that you just can't see. So there's been some sort of conflict with the five of wands with these other people. And that's going to be released because you're going to embody the Eight of Cups. You're going to walk away from anything or you're being encouraged to walk away from anything that doesn't serve you. If other people don't understand what you're trying to achieve and they aren't hearing you, that's okay. The Knave of Swords has come out. So they just might not be at a stage where they're able to understand you. You don't need them to to be on the same page as you. You just need to be true to who you are. And this might mean that some of the people that are doing this are from your past and you need to disconnect from them. Or maybe it's there are people from your past that are really positive. But ultimately what it's saying is whatever this sort of negative influence is in your life, any of these people that are holding you back, you need to move away from them so that you can get into this alignment because that's what's going to open up the doorways to you. So that concludes your reading. I hope that you enjoyed it. Definitely go and check out Lexi's reading. Um, the link to her reading is below. And don't forget about the contest. Subscribe and comment below. I'd also love to know what you thought about this topic or if you have any ideas about other topics you'd like me to cover. You can fill that in below or you can leave an emoji if you want to just enter the contest. I love all of you and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care. Hi pile number three, welcome back. So you picked the butterfly and the clear quartz point. And in case you missed the intro, this is a special collaboration with the amazing Lexi the Leo. So once you're done here, go and check out her reading as well so you can find out how you impress your spirit guides. The link to her reading is below. And just so you guys know, I'm running a contest right now. You can win a free reading with me. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and then comment on this reading. You can leave me an emoji. You can leave me thoughts on the reading. It will all enter you into the contest. And then once I reach the milestone of 6,000 subscribers, I will announce the winner on my community tab. And we're super close, so definitely get in on that. All right, so let's find out what first impression you make when you're meeting new people for the first time. So the first card that you received is Destroyer, releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life. Wow. So you have very powerful energy. Um, this makes me think of passion, desire, creativity, renewal, rebirth. So you might inspire a lot of people. First and foremost, they might see you as really attractive, um, really exciting. There might be a lot of excitement around you. Like my, this might be a situation where like you're working on a really interesting project. Do you have a really interesting career and you're constantly on the move? Things are constantly changing in your world. 
it also looks to me like you're constantly reinventing yourself. Maybe you also come with really interesting ideas that sort of like break things open for people. It's also possible that some people initially feel sort of intimidated by you or afraid of you, or there is something that's sort of off-putting to them. They have this kind of fear of the destruction that you bring. Now, that might be that you're triggering to them in some way. Um, that would be because there's something about you that reminds them of something that's painful, or you are asking them difficult questions, or, you know, it might not be anything that you're doing. It might just be their opinions of themselves, right? They see you as very successful and attractive and interesting and creative and they wish that they were that way and instead of being inspired by you, they dislike you because of that. Let's see what else you've got. Okay, hidden motivations, number one in the intention series. Okay, so some people have very hidden motivations when it comes to you. Some people may have been attracted to you and they befriend you or they offer you a job or some connection, but really they want to date you. Really, they want to marry you, have a family. I mean, there, there could be many different motivations that they have towards bringing you in. This might not even be something that they take action on. This might be something that they daydream about. Like they might not even ever see you again. Like they meet you once at a party and they just can't get you out of their mind. Like they, they want there to be another interaction is what's coming forward. Now, some people may also question your motivations, especially if they're the people that feel intimidated by you. They might feel like you have a big ego or you feel like you're better than them. That's projection. That's purely projection. They have some things that they're not ready to face and it, it, doesn't really mean that you're doing anything intentionally or otherwise, they're going to find fault because they feel more comfortable being around people that are exactly like them because it doesn't threaten what they've already achieved. So that's just the way it is. Okay. Then you got the bat card. Okay. So this is a card that's talking about really strong intuition. There's a lot of amethyst crystals on this card, which are connected to the third eye. So you might be very psychic. Bats obviously are nocturnal. They're also connected to clear audience, getting clear messages, hearing things. Now, sometimes that's literally hearing a noise outside of you, but sometimes it's like having repeating song lyrics go through your head or like a certain phrase or a sentence that pops into your head. Um, are all, all of that is connected back to clear audience. So you might just be very insightful. You're able to see through the darkness. You're able to find your way. Like bats are able to use echolocation skills. So there's something about you being able to communicate with people and you listen to your intuition and that guides you to where you need to go. And some people might see you as possessing skills and abilities that they don't understand. They don't know how you do it. Um, they feel like they're sort of in the dark. They can't see anything and they're like, wow, how are you able to thrive in this environment? You also might be a night owl, maybe. Some people feel like there is something about you being connected to nightlife is what's coming forward. And obviously that's not going to resonate for all of you, but maybe some of you work nights or maybe some of you are involved in, uh, you know, being creative or maybe you are bartenders or maybe you are performers and like most of your performances are at night or something. There's something definitely coming forward about night because even this, there's this curtain that's raising and the curtain has the moon and stars on it. So yeah, you could be performers, like being on a stage, maybe musicians. Okay. Knight of Cups. Ooh, yeah, lots of people are really romantically interested in you. 
like they have romantic thoughts about you. Maybe you've had a lot of people want to date you, like want to sort of sweep you off your feet. And you might not have been that impressed with some of these people because some of them might be a little bit narcissistic and what they are offering you isn't really genuine. Um, some people might see you as being like highly romantic. Like maybe you are super creative and passionate and you express that. Like they see it in the way that you talk about the things that you love. Um, that there's just sort of this romantic energy around you. Death, all right. So death is talking all about renewal, the ending of one thing and the beginning of something else. So one, some people will feel like you're a breath of fresh air. You're giving them like a new way of looking at life. It, it's that resurrection. Others feel intimidated by you, like you're threatening what they've already built. They're afraid of what shifts and changes you might bring into their life. An example of this might be you come in as a manager, you're from a totally different background, you have big ideas about how things are going to change so that the business can become more profitable. Some people will be so excited about the ideas that you're bringing to the table and other people, possibly people that are like, you know, the old guard that are comfortable with the way things have always been because they're threatened by, you know, their inability to adapt, will see you as the villain. Right, the death card is interpreted different ways by different people. Okay, then you got Mothman fear. Yeah, there is something you inspire fear in some people. But like, just like the Grim Reaper on this card, like you, I think, are seen as some sort of threat to what people have already built or what they've already established. What else do we have here? Reptilian integration. Okay. You, I would classify as a shadow worker. You are someone who is powerful, larger than life. You're bringing in fresh new ideas. You are not afraid to rock the boat. You're not afraid to take big risks. And all of that is going to lead to integration away from egoic, you know, approaches to things, away from doing things that aren't bringing the rewards that you want. And in the long run, I think that this will really benefit people. Like, I, I think that a lot of people might see you as it's like you have this danger, but then they're also appeal, like you're very appealing to them. Okay, now I understand. Ben's a 10, you got beauty. Yeah, you're very attractive. Very, very attractive. And it's card number six. So you're attractive, it's balance, and the card death, 13, reduces down to four. You have a strong foundation, a strong, you've built something for yourself. You know who you are. So those that don't have confidence in who they are, if they haven't built something for themselves, they're not for you and you should move away from them. You need to be with people that are on the same level as you. The chariot, yeah, just like I'm saying. So the chariot is a card that's talking about forward movement at a steady, even pace, and it's talking about balance. So knowing when to stop surrender, allow gifts and blessings to just come to you or knowing when to allow someone else to take the lead and then knowing when it's time for you to take the reins and take action and, and you know, cold call people and network and, and, you know, close deals. You know how to do that. Or even if you don't think that you know how to do that, that's how other people see you. They're, they are enamored by you, they are threatened by you, they are enticed by you, there is this love-hate relationship. Even the people that feel like you're a threat also are really attracted to you. The hanged man. 
Yeah, you've gone through some sort of blow up or some sort of metamorphosis. You've sacrificed some things so that you could get to a place where you could fly. The hangman is all about looking at things from a different perspective. So you're definitely challenging the norm. You're challenging people's authority or their opinions about things. And it's just like, I find this so impressive. And I do think that a lot of people are really attracted to you. I think that where it's been an issue for you is that they may be attracted to you because physically they find you so attractive or there's something about you that's magnetic and then they want to control you. Then they want to, you know, be able to have some sort of dominance over you. And it's like, that's never going to work. And then you are seen as some sort of like threat and some sort of villain in a way, just to some, not to all, like overwhelmingly, you're a very impressive person. Like you might have been a model or an actor, like the, the kind of beauty that's coming forward is that sort of otherworldly beauty. Like, like Charlize Theron is coming forward, Beyonce, you know, like these people that are just like, have it all, like they're so gorgeous and then they're super, super talented as well. Like there's many other people that those are the two people that came to mind. Okay, let's find out a couple more things. Like what kind of um, impression? Okay. Let's see. Fan romance celebration party. Yeah, you got, you might actually have fans. You might be someone who has star power and like you're working towards something. You know, maybe this isn't something that you even see in yourself, but you have star power. If that's something that you wanted to do, you could definitely have a successful career on the stage is what I'm getting. And lots of romance. So don't settle. Don't settle for anyone that is you know, making your life difficult in any way because you have what it takes to like really get exactly what you want, exactly what you're looking for. You got fly, a period of ill health and depression. So the sense that I get is that you might have experienced this in the past and you might have been very open with people. They could, it's like, they're impressed by how much you've overcome, but I mean, you could also be inspiring this in people like they are just intimidated by you. So they feel like they are weak in comparison and they feel sort of sad and depressed as a result. Well, great worry over nothing. Yeah. Once again, they're seeing you as this whale and they feel like they don't compare, but you don't see them that way. And they need to just let that stuff go. Like, don't don't worry about that like I think that some people might actually hold themselves back from having really amazing friendships with you because of this energy but that's their problem ink pot problems to be resolved so they might see you as somewhat I mean there's a couple of things that are coming forward like I think that to a certain degree, you point out the things that they feel like they need to fix in themselves. And that might be something that they project then back onto you. Like they paint you as the villain. There's something wrong with you. They feel like this is an issue that needs to be resolved. Like they need to stop you from doing whatever it is that you're doing because it's making them feel uncomfortable. That's where the shadow work aspect comes in. But I think that you are actually going to end up liberating them so that they can get in tune with their own intuition because the ink is purple. Yes. Sunrise, new creative ideas, new ventures, a fresh start. Yeah. You are doing something that's different. You're impressing people and that will eventually inspire them to do the same thing. Um, tree affairs with your family. So you have what it takes to like really stand the test of time. So if you are creating something, it's going to have longevity. Like if you're going to be famous, you're going to be famous for a long time. If you're going to write a best-selling book, it's going to be, you know, a classic, that kind of energy. There's 
longevity. And the, the tree also makes me think that you're very wise. And you might have actually come from a family that's also very accomplished, or there's been some sort of blessings that have come to you through your family tree, and people notice that. That could be that you had some opportunities or doorways opened up to you, but it could also be blessings from your spiritual family. Hat, you will be playing a different role. Yeah, you're unique and different, and you will be playing a different role. Makes me think that some of you might be actors. Um, and then bear, danger, especially in money matters. So some people might feel like you are threatening their success. That if you are allowed to continue, you are going to take the part away from them. They, you're just very impressive. And spirit has your back. All of this is meant to happen. So um I think gravitate towards the people that support you, the fans that, you know, lift you up and the people that are there in your life for the right reasons and those that aren't in your life for the right reasons. I would just keep a healthy distance from them. Let's see if there's any final advice that your guides have for you on, you know, things that you might want to do to sort of avoid some of these headaches. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Okay. What have we got here? Okay, so yeah, just exactly what I was saying before. So you've got the two of pentacles. You need to find balance, balance in all aspects of your life, work life balance, balance between the desires of other people. The hang fei, keep reminding yourself that you are looking at life through a different lens. The fact that you look at life through a different lens is the key that's going to open up this blessing and abundance to you. You are being described as the empress. The empress is someone who receives without having to exert too much effort. Not to say that you're going to get everything without having to lift a finger. No, you're doing things, but you're not, you know, stressing over how this is all going to manifest for you. You are empowered, you are beautiful, you are creating effortlessly, and you are surrendering to the process, knowing that spirit is going to bring the blessings to you that you deserve. You got judgment. Judgment is very much like what I was picking up from the death card. You are, like, like I was saying before, looking at things from a different perspective. You are, for many people, they see you as kind of out of reach, out of, t like, they can't, untouchable is what's coming forward. And I think that your success and your blessings are divinely guided, and you will inspire others to be able to create that in their life as well. You also got the priest card. So the priest is in this, this is the hierophant. So there is some sort of collaboration or something that you're going to do with an established industry or established people that is going to bring you a lot of fulfillment with the Nine of Cups. There's going to be some sort of independence as well. So this could be a situation where you are an entrepreneur, or you are doing something independently. You're an actor, you're a musician. The success is bound to come to you. Don't worry about the people that are trying to shut you down. The Queen of Swords in reverse. This is narcissistic energy. People that are saying negative things to you to hold you back. So if that's happening to you, it's because they're threatened by you. And that's part of your journey. As a shadow worker, you're meant to have to face some of the harder things in life to show people what it looks like to overcome those things. But ultimately, you're going to get to a place of real joy and fulfillment. Woo! I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. I would love to know your thoughts. You can let me know in the comments or you can leave an emoji and that will also enter you into the contest. Definitely go and check out Lexi's reading as I mentioned. The link is below. Um, and if any of you guys are interested in working with me, I forgot to mention this in the other piles, but I do do private readings. You can um, go to my website, odessamall.com, and you can find all of my booking information and all of my pricing and all of that there. I absolutely love all of you and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care.